Hey YouTube, this is the next of our ACT math prep uh, YouTube videos. And this one is intended to talk about simple trigonometry on the ACT. Um, let's get started. Let me bring up my screen sharing tool. Okay, so on the ACT, um, there are maybe one or two questions that talk about um, basic trigonometry. So in a large scope of things, you know, two questions isn't going to help you out that much. But when you're on the cusp of, you know, getting that score that you're dreaming of, you know, these one or two questions can make all the difference. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk, let's talk trig for a second. So trig is probably something you've learned in high school in maybe Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. But trig basically deals with ratios between the sides of a right triangle at least in the ACT scope of things. So here's a right triangle. Um, now, I talked about the ratio of sides. So let's talk about the sides real fast. We've got a hypotenuse, which is the longest side of a triangle. And we've got the two legs. So we'll call this leg one, leg two. Um, so that's all, that's all good and fun. Uh, let's start talking about the actual functions themselves in trigonometry. You've probably seen these on your scientific calculator before. Um, so you'll probably see a button that says uh, sin or sine, a button that says cos or cosine, and tan or tangent. These are all um, functions that um, measure the ratios between um, any two of these sides, the, the first leg, the second leg, or the hypotenuse. So let's talk about the ratios themselves. Now, a fun little acronym you probably learned uh, when you were studying this is SOHCAHTOA. So you can see from our acronym SOHCAHTOA, S probably stands for sine, C stands for cosine, T stands for tangent. So the important thing with sine, cosine, tangent is that you're always talking about an angle. So for purposes of demonstration, let's take sine. Now we're always taking the sine of a certain angle. So we'll call it theta for now. And let's say that this is our theta angle that we're talking about. Um, so sine, as you can see here, we've got an OH next to sine in SOHCAHTOA. The OH stands for a ratio dealing with the opposite over the hypotenuse over the triangle. So let's take a look at that, what that means in our example. So because we're dealing with a sine of theta, which is this angle, and it's measuring the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. We're going to take our angle, go straight across to the opposite leg, and we're going to divide that by the length of hypotenuse. Okay? So let's say we're dealing with like a basic 3, 4, 5 triangle. That means that the sine of theta in the 3, 4, 5 triangle measure this ratio 4 to 5 since 4 was the length of our opposite side and 5 was the length of our hypotenuse. Um, <clears throat> so that is what sine, cosine, and tangent mean. Now, on the ACT, they're going to give you, like, this probably in the context of a story problem. Um, and and don't, don't worry, we'll discuss cosine and tangent, um, but they're very, very similar to how we just discussed sine. Um, so let's, let's come up with a story problem. Let's say that I have a lighthouse. Um, and then we have an ocean. And let's say we have a little boat that's kind of lost at sea. Uh, so let's say we have a sailor in this boat that's looking through binoculars. It's a horrible drawing, but who cares? Uh, as you can see, if this sailor is looking through binoculars, let's say he's looking at the top of the lighthouse, maybe where the light is. You can see this makes a right triangle with his line of sight. <clears throat> so on the ACT, they will probably give you like maybe the angle at which he's looking at the, the top of the lighthouse. So let's say that was like a 30 degree angle or something like that. <clears throat> and let's say we know how tall the lighthouse is. 
So let's say this length right here is like 40 feet, something like that. Now there's one thing we need to be careful of. You can see the sailor is a little bit above, his line is a little bit above the bottom uh, sea level. So let's say that he, his line of sight is six feet above the ground. This is not drawn to scale, by the way. <clears throat> so this length right here, the opposite, because we're not really worried about the six feet that he is above sea level, this length is going to be 30, uh, 34. That comes from 40 feet high total minus the six feet above sea he's looking. Okay, and let's say my problem asks you to find the distance from the boat to the lighthouse. That's probably a very useful situation um, if you're trying to get to land. So, using our trigon trigonometric ratios, this one's going to call for a different one. Notice, we know what the opposite side is. We're not really interested in the hypotenuse, however. We're not really interested in how far directly line of sight it is from his eyes to the top of the lighthouse. We're interested in how far he is from the lighthouse. So we call this x, the distance we're trying to figure out. So you, looking at our ratios up here, let's introduce these other ones. Wherever you see an A, that refers to an adjacent side. So what that means up here with our theta, the, the side adjacent to the angle is this one. You might be tempted to think it could be this one because it's also adjacent, but because this is the hypotenuse, we never refer to it as an adjacent side. So down here in our problem, we have an x for this side length, which just so happens to be adjacent to the angle we're interested in. But we also are given a side length that's opposite of our angle. So which trigonometric function measures the ratio between an opposite and an adjacent side? Look up here. Obviously, it's tangent because tangent has O and A next to it. So, kind of like how we represented up here, we have an angle that belongs to our trig function. In this case, they gave us the angle. The tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the ratio of opposite to adjacent, or in this case, 34 to X. Now, at this point, the ACT will probably be like, um, out of the following choices, which one most closely approximates um, the distance between the boat and the lighthouse? <clears throat> now, the ACT will never really ever ask you for the exact distance, because that's going to require like a calculator that will probably spit out a decimal. So unless it's a really nice round number that you get when solving for x, they're probably just going to expect you to write down the expression for how to solve for x, which is easy enough. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll calculate a decimal just to show you how it's done. But as you can see, we need to get x by itself, and it's currently in the denominator of a problem. So we never like x in the denominator. We always like it up top. So to get x by itself and up top, we need to times both sides of the equation by x. That will cancel these out, leaving us with x tan of 30 degrees is equal to 34. Well, now we've got to x by, get x by itself again. So it's already in the numerator. We're happy there. We've just got to divide both sides by tangent of 30 degrees. Those will cancel. Leaving me see with x is equal to 34 over tangent of 30 degrees. Now, <clears throat> if they just expected you to write down the expression for the length between the lighthouse and the boat, that should be what appears in your answer choices. But let's go ahead and calculate that out, just in case in some weird scenario they wanted you to estimate it or something like that. Right now, I'm typing into my scientific calculator 34 divided by the tangent of 30 degrees. Okay, so the number I'm getting x is equal to 58.9 about, 58.9 feet. Okay, um, what I like to do whenever I'm doing these problems is make sure that the answer makes sense within the illustration I've drawn. 
So if the lighthouse is 34 feet tall, it makes sense that this distance is probably going to be 58.9 feet. If my calculator spat out some really small number or just something that does not make sense, it would probably mean my calculator is not set to the degree mode like we're interested in. See, we're, we measure angles in geometry in terms of degrees or in terms of radians. Um, the difference between those two maybe I'll cover in a later video. But right now, just worry about getting the calculator to the degree mode. When you do that, it varies by the calculator. Um, so if you're ever curious as to how to do that, you can probably get onto Google and type in your calculator and, and just type in how to switch to degree mode or something like that. Um, so that's how you solve that type of a problem. Once again, the ACT loves to deal with exact values, so you'll probably just want to worry about being able to get this expression right here. I just covered that up. This expression right here. Um, so we covered sine and, and tangents. The only thing left is really cosine, which is just the same the same kind of ratio idea. In this case, we're just dealing with like ratio of our adjacent side length to our hypotenuse. But it's the same thing. You just solve for x in the end. Um, so that's simple trig for you. We'll go into some more complex trig examples a little bit later on. Um, okay, let's get out of this screen share. Thanks for watching tonight about um, simple trigonometric ratios. Just to recap, um, the best way to memorize those is by using the mnemonic device, SOPATOA, which stands for sine, opposite hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent hypotenuse, and tangent, opposite adjacent. Um, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon as we do our next video. And good luck with your ACT prep.